Hello everyone, and welcome to another DE Vault video. And my name is Luna, and today I will be showing you some 2D uh, techniques in Photoshop. One of the courses I teach is 2D for Games 1, uh, which is the art course for our game development and our in game production track. Um, it's not very fancy concept art or anything. Um, basically, in this course, we try to teach that everyone can make art as long as you know the basics and the fundamentals and kind of the guidelines to create stuff that looks good. Um, by the end of the semester, we always try to make it this endless runner where the students create their own sprites and their own background and so on. Um, I'd like to say to all my students in this course that even if you're like very technical, you still have to learn the basics of art. So if you work in a company, you need to understand what other people are doing as well. And it's not because you've never held a pencil that you can't make art. So I try to show people that you can, whatever you do, if you just follow these very simple techniques and rules, you can also make uh, some nice output. So um, for today, I was thinking of maybe creating like a landscape uh, inspired by the hills like green hills with a castle or something. So what the first thing I did is go look for reference. Um, I always try to steer people away from trying to look for reference uh, that is concept art or something, because it's already been designed by somebody. So copying that would not be nice. Uh, and also it might get you in trouble. So like look for real life pictures. Like if you want to make a fantasy castle, there's so many cool castles in the world. Um, like basically just go to Google or Pinterest and you can find these very scenic pictures. Like these are just really cool realistic pictures. And then we have like this heavily edited pictures, but they're nice to like get a mood on or something. Like this is inspiring to me. Um, so first thing I did was kind of make a mood board. Um, with all these pictures to get a view, to get a vibe of what I want to do and have some reference, of course. Because one of the things you really need to learn is look at reference and look at the world around you to then translate that world into a 2D piece, into a flat surface. Um, so I'm going to put this mood board on my other screen so it's not in the way of uh, the Photoshop. Um, so first thing I will do, of course, is make a new file. For this file, I'm just gonna do like a 90, 20 by 10, 80. Um, sometimes it's better to take a bigger, like a 4K or 2K um, file and then afterwards scaling it down because the bigger you work, um, the more in detail you can go. But I think this will be enough for what I want to show you today. So I just make this file and make sure the width and the height is right. Uh, orientation, I'm going to make a landscape. So I'm going to, of course, use landscape orientation. It's not going to be a portrait. And all the rest I can just leave however I want it. I can also give this a name, um, but for now it's just untitled. And the first thing I will do, of course, is um, save it out. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to call this landscape. Uh, zero two because I already have something else called landscape. Uh, why do I do this? Well, then I just have to press Ctrl S to save. And that's something you do want to do. You never know something might crash um, and then you lose everything. So saving it out will ease everything. Um, so, OK, how do we start this? Well, like I said, the first thing you want to do is take a look at the real life word. And I, I have like this nice picture here from my mood board. I'm just going to paste it in here because I think it's a really cool picture. Um, to also show something very common in here. You know, we have these hills in the back and they like here, you can even see people here. You can see a bit of like the grass texture. Um, like a lot of stones, but of course these hills in the back, since they're so far away, you won't see any of that detail. Uh, also, they will look more like, they will look more like they blend with the sky and they're darker and, um, 
or, or lighter even and they don't look as green even though you know if you would stand on there it is a green grassy hill um the effect that things that are in the background look lighter and less saturated and blend more with the sky we call that atmospheric perspective um and like i'm gonna use this to also show you um like if i pick a color here by holding holding alt you can see like it it is if you look at my color wheel over here uh so we have like the saturation which is like uh, how saturated how vivid your color is um and then we have the brightness which is the lightness or the darkness of our color and then our u which is h uh, u is basically the color itself so the color at its very core and then we still have the saturation and brightness to change uh, this color because i mean if i pick this color and then move these sliders it looks like a different color but at its core it's still the same u but if you if you like color pick this um you can see like here in the front the sliders kind of like especially here in the grass the saturation the brightness stay in the same road and it's all around this green and yellow uh, of course if i pick the rocks it will be a different color because rocks are not green uh but if you like if I do this in the back, you see the saturation and the brightness starts to shift. And the more I go to the back, the more the saturation, like all the way here, the saturation stays around here because it's that far away. And that's what that atmospheric perspective does. So in the front, I have like all these very bright, vivid colors. Uh, of course, this is like a gray uh, cast sky, so it's not like very sunny or anything but still we have this very bright colors then over here we will go to less saturated more grayish colors and the more to the back they actually start to turn blue like actually shift towards the more bluish green instead of the uh, green green so all the way at the back we have like this greenish gray which fits well with our sky even though you know those hills should be green. Um, so that's something we have to keep in mind when we are creating our work, especially if you want to create like a landscape or something. Uh, well, atmospheric perspective is everywhere, of course. Um, but if you want to create a landscape, this will definitely help you make it more believable, give it more depth, uh, especially if you want to work with a parallax or something, um, which is like different layers that move at different speeds to create a depth effect uh, you really want that atmospheric perspective in there because it helps you make it more believable um so you see i've been picking some colors here and th this is a picture so it's fine to like go over it and pick out a nice color palette what else i could do to make a nice color palette is basically just i'm gonna copy the picture though so i don't i'm gonna call this ref uh also trying to name my layers so because they're gonna be a lot later on uh what i like to do is go to filter pixelate uh, mosaic and it will basically give me if i put this high enough give me a color palette so these are the nice colors that i can find in this picture so this mosaic it tries to create a mosaic of the picture which will reduce it to simple pixels, will reduce it, well, picture is pixels, will reduce it to uh, a color palette, basically. And now I can use this nice color palette um, as a reference to create my colors. I'm gonna put these two in a folder, I'm gonna call it ref, uh, and hide this one, I'm scale this one a bit down as well. There you go. Um, so I want to start my landscape. Where do I start? Well, I would start all the way in the back. So our sky, basically. So we have our, if we look at the picture, we have our gray sky here. Um, and what I would like to take for the sky is actually I like to make a gradient. So if I go into my gradient tool, which is uh, sometimes it looks like a bucket, but if you click it, it's a gradient. And what is what is a gradient? Well, it's 
one color floating into the other color um, like this of course now I made it black and white I wanna choose a sky color so once again I'm gonna color pick I'm gonna start color picking from my palette here uh, and it is a gray day so maybe it starts light at the bottom like this the difference is very subtle but it will help uh, convey the idea in the end if I feel like okay this is nice but it is quite dark and, and blend uh, I want to give it more of a color push I can press ctrl u and get my use saturation out uh, and like I can saturate it a bit more if I want I can shift the color like if I would want more of a pinkish sky or more of a greenish uh, but I want to push out the color a bit more and we can still change this right so this is um, just a layer which I will call background um, and I mean I can still change this if I want later on uh, and I'm gonna also put this in a folder which I call background one uh, I want to keep everything in layers in case I want to export this uh, into unity or something to create a parallax effect uh, then it will be easier if it's come like changed in different folders and stuff uh so this is my gradient i start from basically just so this is my sky um and we can still change this if we want so now i want to create my first hill so all these hills in the background um i'm just gonna take my lasso tool and I have two lasso tool I have like a normal one and a polygonal one this one is very like has sharp points um, compared to this one which can be very flowy and stuff but since those mountains in the back are quite angular and like very because they're so far away they seem very cut off um, I am gonna start with the polygonal lasso tool and just try to um, like get the shape in and now um, I could be filling this with a solid color uh, and what that does is that later on I can so if I say okay I, I like this color I think this will be a good color for the mountains in the back uh, but if later on I decide like mm, nope I want another color you can just like double click on it and change the color so for example um, maybe this is a bit now I like the color I'm gonna leave it like that um, so for now I can I'm just gonna use the color fill Mountains one. Uh, and then of course we have mountains all the way in the back and then we have another layer of mountains just in front of it and it will still be like you can just make a random shape it doesn't have to be too complicated and solid color right and you already picked um a darker color because it's closer and now it seems like they're very close of course because there, there are no other mountains yet uh, but this is the effect we create and what i can do as well is like copy my sky and just put the opacity down and it will blend the mountains in the back a bit more with the actual uh, sky which is something like I'm gonna copy it again uh, it's something I want to create of course this sky is now influencing not only the mountains but also 
like the things behind it, the layers underneath it. Like if you look at that layer panel here, uh, like this is now on top of everything that's underneath it. So if I want to avoid it and only like apply this sky to this pair of mountains, I can just hold Alt and create a clipping mask. And now this will only influence the mountain. So if I would draw in this sky layer, you see it only stays in this mountain area. And that's something I want to uh, do. Otherwise, if I don't do this, I can draw and it will also affect the mountains in the back. And I want to avoid that. So I'm using this uh, clipping mask to make sure it only affects the mountain itself. All right. Um, I am going to make this one actually already a little more green. Like if we look at the color palette, like I think this could be a nice one. Uh, and this is just the base. I'm, I'm going to do more with it later on. Uh, but to start off, I think this can help. Um, gonna make another pair of mountains, but now I am gonna switch, I think, to the more like this layer of mountains. So they're gonna be way greener. Um, so let's get the shape something like this in here. And like I have this open on my other screen so I can take a look at the general shape of these mountains. Uh, and create another solid color. Uh, wait, just gonna make it like this for a second so I can open this. Uh, let's say it's a bit too dark. I think this is a nice one and then I can... something like this. This is way too green, of course, um, but like maybe something like this. Yeah, this could work. And then we can still later on add stuff. Uh, again, I'm going to copy my sky, put it over here. I'm going to lower the opacity so it doesn't influence it as much. Uh, and I'm going to put this in a folder and call it background to because it's closer to our camera, basically. Um, but we still want this to be background material, basically. Um, so, okay, that's another layer. And now I'm going to add another one. But now I am going to move to these more like rounded mountains. So I'm going to change my uh, lasso tool to this more rounded lasso, uh, and let's see. And it, this will give me a more flowy shape. Um, so you can put a use saturation above it, or you can, of course, um, just keep playing until you find a color that is nice. Um, the reason I actually like to use like a normal layer. Um, oh, wait, I can't do it like this. There you go. Now it's a, a rasterized layer. Um, why I like using it is just I can press Ctrl U and then I can like play around with this a bit more. And you can do that with like a fill layer. Then you actually have to use the U saturation, put that above it. Um, so that's why I like using this rest light layer at some point better. Uh, the only thing, of course, with these kind of layers, is if I want to scale this, you see how like the edge gets pixelated. Uh, that's because, of course, this is a pixelated layer. So if you stretch the pixels, they will uh, change form. Um, but yeah, OK, this is starting to look nice. I'm going to oh, do this again. And put this in a folder once again. Well, put it in there. No. There you go. It's in the folder. Um, and I'm going to call this mid ground. Because it's in the middle. Oh, I accidentally put it in my ref folder. There you go. Um, and then I'm going to make 
another layer, uh, which will be the hill that has my castle on it. Uh, I am gonna... And it is okay, like... I am using, of course, my Wacom tablet, so it's easier to get like these nice flowy lines. Um, this is also perfectly, I mean, of course I have a medium, but you can also do this on like a smaller one. Uh, especially for the courses like 2D for games, it's really not necessary to have like a giant one or one with a screen inside. Um, the You do need a Wacom tablet, like you also need it for the course for 3D, for texturing and stuff. So it's not like something that you shouldn't, that you don't need uh, ever again or something. Um, but you don't need a big one. You can get one of the cheap ones. It's more than enough to do stuff like this. Uh, and I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to just fill it with my bucket tool. Because we're closer to the foreground. Let's see. Yeah, let's take something like this. And I know this might look weird. Uh, but if we like zoom out. It is starting to look like... It from from very far it started to look like a picture so that's good um i think the contrast between these is maybe a bit too much so still gonna yeah like this there you go and let's put this in mid ground too um and this is where i will put my castle on later on then i still need a foreground uh and the foreground i am gonna just try to make this like flat, um, depending on what kind of game, of course, you're making. But imagine this is like the platform your character is running on. Um, and then later on, he will maybe go like to the castle or something. Uh, but this is, imagine this is like a platform or something. This would be the platform your character is running on. And I'm gonna give it yeah let's see something like this although i'm gonna make it a bit darker and the difference between like this and this isn't that great of course let me copy my sky in here again and lower it i'm gonna put it on overlay so it plays a bit better with the colors. All right, and it, it's starting to become very bright. And if I look at the overview now, I feel, I'm gonna put this in foreground. Oh yeah, maybe I should rename my layers before everything becomes a mess. It's sometimes hard to like keep track of that. You easily forget about it. Uh, okay, that was this one. Nope, it's the other one I want. Okay, maybe shift it a bit more. Yeah, that's starting to look better, but then this one should also shift more towards the green. Yes, there you go. Okay. This is a good base to start from. Of course, we're gonna keep tweaking this uh, until it looks nice. Next thing I wanna do is add gradients to everything. Uh, gradients are a very nice way just to create like add more depth or add more to everything. So like for the foreground, for example, I want to create a gradient, uh, let's say from this green to, I'm gonna go with a lighter green. I'm gonna like up the brightness a bit lower, lower the saturation and switch it a bit to more towards the yellow. Um, because I want this to be like where the sun hits and where, um, of course, the shadow is coming in. Because then you can get more feeling of, aha, this is actually a mountain. 
Uh, and of course, if I do this, it will be on my whole canvas and I want to avoid that. So this layer, which will be my gradient, um, I'm gonna like clip mask it again. And there you go. I can now create a nice gradient like this. And it doesn't have to be very harsh, right? It can be very subtle, like you can barely see it. Uh, and then I'm just gonna lower the opacity. But it is there. There is definitely a difference here. And that's what we want to achieve here. Um, I'm gonna lower it a bit more. And you can also like play with these blend modes. Uh, blend modes will like, enhance or make it darker or do weird stuff. Like you can just go through them and maybe sometimes you hit an effect that you think like, oh, okay, this is really cool. I can use this. Um, I'm gonna do this for all my mountains. So this one, for example, as well. Let's say the sun is coming from there or something. Uh, I am gonna try to keep it straight. See, like, if I drag very slightly, it's a very big, like, it's, it's quite a harsh um, gradient, but if I drag, it will see, it will be more of a nice gradient. Um, I can, I'm not really liking how it reacts here, but that's okay, I can... Wait. Just play around a bit with it. Uh, yeah. But once again, I will, of course, I'm not going to put it on overlay. I'm just going to leave it like this. Okay, and the ones in our mid-ground. For here, I am gonna change the colors of my gradient. Um, because otherwise they will be a bit too bright to my liking. Oh, they're too close together. Um, let's go into my color palette and take a look. I can have this and something like, oh no, that's way too dark. Something like this maybe. And then here I will make it a bit more bright. Yeah, this might be something. And lower the opacity. I think I'm gonna use this one as well here. All right. Next up. All right. And lower opacity. And then the ones in the background, I am going to change the colors again. Uh, to, let's see, more this and then, oh, this is darker. Oh, that's way too gray. 
Oh, no, no. Um... Gonna uh, wait, I am gonna change this a bit towards the blue. Uh, or like I can use colorize and then I can no colorize is not working for this one I'm gonna shift it a bit to blue or you know just where's my tiny color palette? Ah, uh -huh. these should be better to use. Yes, all right. And then, of course. And. It is very subtle, but it helps um, with the overall feel of this. Okay, this is starting to look better. And of course, there's more things we can add here. Uh, like, for example, what I'm still missing, especially because I, I, I feel like this is a very gray like day, like there's a lot of clouds, so gonna make some clouds um so let's see clouds is also something you can make very easily uh what i like to do and i'm gonna take like the general photoshop brushes because i have like a whole bunch of brushes that i got from the internet or like we made ourselves for courses um what i like to do for clouds is just take a br big hard round brush which means that the brush like, if I, I draw with it, it's just, like, it's this color and nothing else. Uh, if I, for example, put on my pen pressure opacity, this means that if I press soft, it will have, like, a soft look. If I press hard, you will see it will be harder. Uh, and I can do the same with uh, the size of this pen. So if I press soft, it will be soft size, like, a small size. If I press hard, it will be truer to the size of the brush. And this is really handy for drawing and stuff. Uh, but for what I want to do now, I want to make sure this like opacity and this pen pressure size is off uh, Because I just need circles. I just want to make circles And I'm I'm gonna make them No, I'm gonna make them in these layers uh, just gonna Because basically if we look at clouds if we like let's take my little board here If you see clouds, they have like this soft round feeling at the top, this fluffy uh, feeling, and at the bottom they're flat. Um, and we want to kind of recreate this kind of shape, but stylize it. So we're not going to make like hyper realistic clouds, we're going to make like a more stylized view of clouds. Um, fluffy white clouds, that is. Uh, so I'm going to just try to create that fluffiness uh, and I'm gonna take just white of course you can't really see it here but it doesn't matter so basically what I'm just doing I'm just pressing with my pen and making them smaller uh, adding more fluff to them like maybe these are already too much I like these nice little bends in them and what this will do what i will do next is take the marquee tool which is i'm on my keyboard uh, and just i'm first gonna turn it a bit so take my controls control t and then just turn it a bit 
select this and just backspace delete it and now I have one of those flat clouds uh, which is pretty nice um, of course this it's just like it doesn't have the fluffy feel to it and I do want to give it like the fluffy feel like it blends with our sky so I want to put a gradient on that um, but I'm not just gonna take like a new layer um, I'm gonna select my layer first so control and if I click down on my thumbnail I get like the selection of the cloud I made and then I will make a new layer and with the gradient tool I just wanna I'm gonna hide the bottom one so you can see it better I want to create like this gradient but the thing is I want the like the bottom to kind of disappear so if I click on the gradient editor like so if you see the if I take the gradient tool you have like the gradient at the top here and now it's just selecting my background and foreground color uh, but I also have some options here and one of the options is uh, foreground to transparent so it will take my foreground color and then move to be transparent meaning that it won't have any um, detail in them so if I would draw now of course I will need a new layer uh, there you go. So if I now draw out my clouds and Ctrl D to delete it, uh, it has like this nasty edge to it. So I'm, I'm just going to delete the layer and start over. Uh, yes, please. And make a new layer. There you go. And now you see like it has this nice fluffy feeling to it like it fades out towards the bottom and that's how i want to create my clouds and i have like the still the original layer i'm gonna call this cloud one uh i can create them multiple at a time but thoughtful it would be easier to show it like this so again i will make a new cloud maybe I'm gonna make a bigger one this time. Of course, you can still scale them, so it doesn't really matter. Um, oh. Oh, I'm in the wrong layer. I'm drawing my sky layer. That's not good. Uh, yeah, that's always like, always make sure you're not drawing in the wrong layer, because um, it might get you in trouble if you realize suddenly you've been drawing on the wrong layer the whole time. Maybe it goes out like this. Um, a bit like this, there you go. And again, I will take the marquee tool, select the bottom, select a bit more. There you go. Another nice cloud shape. I will select this one. And I'm gonna do it in the same, no, I'm gonna do it in a new layer. Um, take my gradient tool, which is still on the transparent one. And just like that, there you have it, a nice faded cloud. Uh, I'm gonna make one more. So I have like three different ones. Um, it's always nicer to have like odd numbers instead of even numbers, call that the rule of odds. Uh, let's say so cloud two. Let's make another one. I'm gonna make this like a big chunky one. There we go. And just delete the bottom. And now again select it, hide this layer, make a new one gradient tool there we go so now I have three nice clouds and I'm gonna put all of them in the same um, group which I will call clouds I will put them like just on the background layer um, if you would work like in a parallax or put this in unity you can make them a separate png and just put them on different layers to create that nice cloud effect um, for example you can also put some on the second background layer and then they will 
move at different speeds. But for now, I'm just gonna leave them here. Uh, I will move them, like, if I move them around a bit. Uh, I'm liking the simplicity of this. I am gonna put like a sky layer on top of it as well. And maybe just to give it some more color. To blend it a bit better with the background. Because they are quite bright, but like they should be brighter at the top, of course, because the sun is shining there. Uh, all right. But got me some nice clouds. Um, what I also really want to create in here, and especially like um, this picture really inspired me. Like how, you see how the mist like rolls over these hills, basically. I really want that in there. I really want like mist around my castle. I think that would be really cool. So I'm gonna create some mist and. It will be really cool to put this mist in between the mountains to give more of like that uh, mountain effect. Uh, there's a few ways we can do this. Like in the background layers, I will keep it fairly simple. And just with like a... The lasso tool will make like this mist shape, I guess. Um, Maybe this is even a bit too much, but that doesn't matter. And with my bucket tool, I will just fill it in. Uh, I am not gonna take white, pure white, because it might be too much. So I'm gonna go like a grayish color. Maybe like a grayish with like a, a little bit of tone to it. Uh, all right. And just fill it in. Of course, it's, it's hidden behind all these mountains, so you won't see it. Uh, this is too much. You could say, okay, I lower the opacity, but uh, I really want to create this misty effect. So I will take, go to blur and um, I'm gonna Gaussian blur it. And it kind of keeps the shape, but it also kind of disappears. And that's what I want for these kind of layers. And then you can still like, maybe I, I overdid, there you go. Um, I'm gonna call this mist. And this is nice. Oh, I didn't really, I accidentally moved it like for, all the way in the back, this could work. I'm gonna lower the opacity a bit so it's not too much. I think I even wanna like make it not dark, but like less bright at least. Just a tiny bit because I think it's a bit too bright. And I will copy this to this mountain as well. Um, Ctrl-T, flip horizontal, there you go, and once again lower that opacity. So you see now it's starting to get like this very misty mountains effect. I'm gonna, well I'm gonna use the same one here. Oh. I also feel like this hill is a bit too high, so I'm gonna lower it a tiny bit. And then I see this mist has make sure like it really fits in the canvas and it doesn't go outside it. If it's cut off, of course. Uh, all right. Now over here, it's closer to the camera, so our mist will have more detail to it. Um, of course, it's mist. It's not like it has very much detail, but I, I want to create it more like the clouds, like we did here. Um, so 
I am gonna create a new layer and just with a brush like create clouds again but make them more like you know the rolling mist like we see here like it rolls up it's, it's basically very low hanging clouds um that i want to create here oh there we go so i'm gonna try and, and get a shape in here And this one I'm not gonna cut off as much. Uh, I just wanna... Of course, it depends on where the wind comes from. If it would blow away, I guess. Um, but I want everything to move towards this. So, Because here I'm gonna put a castle. And that will be the focal point of my uh, drawing. So it will be nice like if the mist actually appears to be pointing towards that area Wait, I'm gonna move it because I'm cutting it off again and just like I, I make my brush smaller oh accidentally oh I'm in that wrong layer again Like for me, it's just a shortcut on my keyboard. Um, you can put that in however you like. You have people, like you, some people, Wacom's have buttons and you can put it in there, like the how you size your brush. There's also this trick by um, holding, I think it's control and right clicking or something. Uh, I don't know, I don't like using it. So I don't really know the shortcut by heart. I just like my trusty old, um, keyboard shortcut so okay I have this shape again I will select it make a new layer and use that gradient to be used on the clouds as well uh, in my gradient tool hmm Alright, I am not a big fan of the bottom here. Um, I think the edge there is a bit too harsh, so I'm gonna use my eraser tool. Um, so if I click E, so the eraser, your eraser is basically a brush as well. So if I just brush, it, it will delete uh, what I have on this layer. Um, but if I take like this soft round brush, and I will take one soft round opacity. So pen pressure opacity, meaning that if I do very soft, it will be very soft. If I press hard, it will release very hard. So I will use that to like kind of erase very softly what I have here. Uh, or I could use a mask, of course, but I don't know. Nah, it's not looking like I want it to look. Uh, I think I'm just gonna lasso deselect this, delete this layer. Yes, this will look better. Um, Although, will it? Hmm. Just gonna change it here again. Of course, this will mostly be hidden, so it doesn't really matter. The reason I'm 
pressing Ctrl Z. Um, if, if you use a gradient with the transparency, it will just keep adding and adding and adding on top of that transparency. And you don't want that, so that's why I Ctrl Z if I don't like the result. Um, but this result is like pretty okay. And then, uh, let's say we put this one first here. I'm gonna call this Mist 2. And of course, this is way too much. Like, come on, lower. I think I'm even gonna blur it a bit. Caution blur. But just a tiny. Yes, something like this. It still has like the shape in it, but it's being blurred and then... Hmm. Oh, no, I'm just gonna do it like this. And like this way I can, if I now copy this, and maybe even just... No, not flip. Just scale it. Maybe. Hmm. I can even like change. Uh, or maybe I want to warp it a bit. Warping will like give you these handles to change the shape of your mist. And that way with one mist I can just create more mist. And lower it a bit. Just like now I'm, I'm creating some texture in here um, and that might be nice oh. I'm gonna put another sky above these guys put them in a group so I can put the sky just above both of them okay nice maybe this is a bit too high. And I will copy these to this layer as well. These peaks are kind of too similar. Uh, so I will add like something called a mask. So if I click this icon, I will add a mask and what that does if I paint in this mask with black everything that is black will disappear from that layer uh, everything that's white is visible so if I like, like, um, click this mask if I alt click on it I can see the actual mask so if I would paint in this you see okay this is what my I'm masking out uh, this way if I um, do something and I feel like oh this is not what I wanted. I want to tweak it a bit. I can always go back. Um, like just gonna with my soft brush. And I only using a soft brush because it's mist. Like a soft brush is something you want to stay away from if it's not for mist or something, because uh, it might end up weird. But see, like now I can like adjust mist, and if I feel like oh no, I overdid it. I can paint with white and it will return. But I think this should be fine. And let's do it. No, maybe not yet for this one. We'll see what it gives if I like, put a castle on here. There you go. Um, And maybe I'm even gonna 
this one here. Just a bit. Once again, I'm going to zoom out. And this is starting to look nice. Um, this one here. I think I overdid the peaks a bit, so I'm just going to paint this out. There you go. All right. This is starting to look cool. Um, but maybe now I will move on to the castle and then we can still continue on our landscape because I want to add some texture to it as well. Uh, but first I want to make put my castle in there to have more of a better view of my hills. So for this castle, I'm going to use this technique. Um, to make it modular, so I'm not just going to draw one castle and be done with it. I want to just create like some towers, some main house, uh, and then just copy and paste them around to create different kind of castles. Uh, and th this might be cool because I'm going to put one castle here, but maybe I want to put like another tiny tower or a tiny castle in the background or something. Um, so I'm going to start by first of all, I want to make I want to use uh, smart objects. So what does that mean? I make a new layer and if I click convert to smart object, you will see it has like this little symbol here. And if I double click it, it will open a new file. Now, what does this mean? Well, whatever I draw in this file. So let's say I want a smile, oh, not a soft brush, a smiley or something. And I save this. So I press control S, so it's saved. Now you see this smiley will be in here uh, because that is my smart object and I can scale it and move it around as much as I want. Uh, whatever I will do with it, if I now give him eyebrows, um, it will be adjusted in my main file. So I don't have to do everything in my main file. And this will also help us uh, keep the amount of layers we have down. And it will be easier to just concentrate on making that one piece without everything else being in the background. So if I say, okay, let's call this um, maybe tower. Oh, that's not how you write tower. Tower one. Um, and I'm gonna reopen this just to be sure. Oh, it keeps its name. All right, doesn't matter. Um, so I'm gonna delete this though. No more smileys if I save this. Right, it's gone. So I want to create a tower. Um, once again, I'm going to take a look at my reference. And that's why I have these guys over here. If you look like I'm, I'm looking, I'm not going to make like a fairy tale princess castle, like the ones at the top here, although they're very cool. I don't think they fit the sphere I want to go for. I want a more like, you know, Scottish castle on a hill or something. Um, it's, so I looked up some castles in Scotland and there's a lot of them, so that's handy. Uh, these might not be in Scotland, but it's just a reference I found. And I think like just this very like medieval uh, blocky castle could be really cool. And I'm, I'm going to start with making like this classic, classic tower. So, you know, the tower with the guards or I don't know what they're called uh, in English. I might have to look that up. Okay, so apparently they're called battlements. So I want to make this classic tower with battlements. Um, I am going to use shapes this time. So I once again, I have my reference open on my other screen so I can really like maybe I, I just put it here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, you can also like drag this into Photoshop if you want. I'm using PureRef at the moment because uh, I think it's pretty handy. It overlays and I can just I can keep it here. Um, so I want to start by making like this main shape. And I'm just going to take uh, this little nifty tool over here, which we call the shape tool. Uh, as you, of course, now my <laughs> thing is in front of it. If you um, 
see you also have an ellipse tool, a polygon tool, a line tool, and a custom shape tool. Uh, but I'm going to start with the rectangle tool. And I'm going to make sure this is on shape. You want this to be on shape. Uh, not using pots or something. Because this shape um, is easy to work with. And like I can make it as big and as small as I want. It won't influence the pixels. It won't stretch weirdly or something. I just want to use shape. And if I now just draw my square, uh, as you can see, uh, it has round corners. So um, this property window opens up. I'm just going to put all my corners on zero. So I have straight corners here. Uh, and as you can see, it becomes this big red square. Why is it a big red square? Well, because my fill all the way at the top is on red. If I put this on any other color, it will become this color. And that's the handy thing about shapes is that like just with the fill solid color, you can just like fill it in in whatever color you want. And that's your shape. Uh, of course, I do want more like this stone color. So I'm going to go to this more like, let's say reddish gray. I think since my hills are like green and green is considered a very cold color, I want to more bit like a yellowish red. Um, I might see like, I'm just going to save it and see what it gives. Like if I would put this here, I think they might work nicely together, but we can still change everything around here. Um, I'm going to make it smaller with my transform tools. Just control T. And this is my tower. Done. Um, no, I'm gonna add more, of course. So again, with the rectangle tool, if I stay in this layer, I can add another shape. And um, because I already press enter, it doesn't really create like a new layer for me. Again, I will Normally, this should be on zero by default. I don't really I once put them on 10 and now they keep popping up to 10, uh, but that's okay. I will just leave it like this. So, of course, I want to create oh, this upper part, so which will be this, and then I will add the battlements to them. Um, so I have that upper part. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Um, if I like just drag it, it scales it nicely uniformly. If I hold shift and drag, I can scale like scale it in one direction, which is nice uh, for stuff like this, for example. And OK, this is this is cool. Um, now it's starting to look like this. And then I will add the battlements itself, which also will just be like squares, little squares. Um, oh, I am going to use the transform tools, which is a bit more handy. And if I zoom in, there you go, I can align them nicely. Um, I'm going to make sure they like shift. Um, like you have to control T before you can do this. Otherwise it keeps like if I hold shift here, it scales. If I hold shift in the shape tool, it scales uniformly. And if I hold shift in the transform tool, then it doesn't. It's a bit weird. I don't know why they made it like this. Um, but that's all fine. I'm gonna alt shift again to make another copy. I'm gonna make sure it's just three of them. There you go. Um, I'm gonna control E combine these three. 
And now, okay, I have this tower, but of course, I mean, it's super flat. So how am I gonna add detail to this? Well, I am gonna just take my shape tool again. Um, and maybe I'll just copy this one. And just scale it down like this. And then I'm gonna change the color to, you'd say, a shadow color, basically. But I'm not just gonna do this, because sure, it looks like a shadow, like it has like this dark hair, so it's a shadow. But what I like to do more, um, and it depends on colors, I didn't do it with the hills, I could have done it with the hills, but I don't think this trick works for green. Um, but for a lot of things, this trick works, is I just gonna make this shadow, like I'm gonna take purple, I'm just gonna color it like a light purple. And then I'm gonna put this on multiply. And what it will do, multiply will mix, will kind of amplify the layer you have with the layer underneath it. And that way it mixes nicely. And why purple? Well, if you like take a shadow, uh, shadows are not, they're not perfectly black, they're not perfectly gray, like there's always some tint in there. And that all depends on the color that's underneath it, but also the light source you use. So if you have like a very warm light, the shadows usually will be cold, which is bluish, purplish, uh, and vice versa. If you have a very cold light, you will have warmer shadows. Um, so I'm gonna take like this purple and multiply it, because I think it has a really nice effect to it. And I'm gonna recall like rename the shadow, um, this is tower. And now like it already has more the feeling like, okay, there there's some, it, it does look like there's shadow there. Uh, and of course I also wanna do this uh, at the top. I wanna add shadows like this, take my purple, I'm gonna put this here, multiply this, and don't just like um, leave it, of course, at like you can play with the opacity as well to mix it a bit because then you will see, uh, like, okay, if I mix this a bit, okay, it nicely blends, it's not that harsh. And I'm gonna do the same here, but uh, I wanna use my clipping mask so now. See, I have this nice... Oh wait, my sun in my image is coming from the other side, of course. There you go. So, now I created this. To give the battlements... some depth and okay this is starting to look nice um but i'm gonna put this is uh top and then this is battlements um of course if i look at my reference this is a round tower and this feels still very flat or this could be like a squarish tower but i want to give it a round feeling um, I'm gonna make a new layer, so I'm gonna call this tower, uh, make a new layer and just with like my marquee tool, make a selection, so that's this one over here, make a selection and go fill that with my favorite purple color, um, of course with the bucket tool, not with the gradient tool, just fill this and of course use a clipping mask, put this on multiply, there you go. I'm gonna move it a bit. I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna copy this. Like this. There you go. Both of them lower. And now it looks more like, uh, like a tower with six sides or something. So I still wanna like, make it more of a rounded feeling. So I'm gonna take these two. Control E. So they 
um, first gonna remove the multiply because otherwise this won't work. Uh, but control E, put them back on multiply, uh, and then I will go to filter, blur, and let's say Gaussian blur again. And I will just blend them like this. And there you go. Now you have like this nice gradient, um, which creates like a feeling that it's rounded. Though I feel like it should be a bit darker because it with the blend uh, with the merging it made it lighter. So I'm just gonna like amp up the saturation here and then put it back on multiply. There we go. And this is a nice color. And the nicest thing about this is if I take um, like these, so I select the tower, the top and the battlements, so basically the bases of my tower, uh, and I say, okay, but I actually wanted a pink tower. I can just select these and bam, now I have a pink tower. Uh, of course, <laughs> we're not gonna do that, but that's like the nice thing about using shapes. You can easily like if your teacher tells you like, oh, maybe make it a bit more this color, then you don't have to redraw everything. You can just take it and, and like change it on the go. And let's see. Nice. Now I have this nice um, tower in my image. Uh, of course, I think I, I, I will copy the battlements as well. And just oh. I can move them like this um, with my path selection tool I can just select one of them and delete it yes I want to delete this and this one I will make a bit more dark or I will just say okay copy fill them in my purple, multiply them on top. There you go. Now they look like they are in the back. If I, of course, I am gonna move them a bit down. There you go. Yeah, something like this. All right. Uh, of course, I don't want all of this uh, like around it because it, it, it is taking up space so I'm just gonna use my crop tool over here and just crop it so um, it kind of only has the tower around it. It will also be easier to scale and stuff. All right um, so I have my tower but I feel like I should also add a window, just a small window. So I'm gonna make a new square because I want a square window. I'm just gonna make a round window because it's a castle. Uh, I'm gonna put my fill on like a darkish, let's say a dark brown uh, as the inside. If you look at the reference, you see like it's a very dark window. Um, window. I'm gonna like leave it in, in this folder as well, um, just so the shadow also applies to it, because it's part of my uh, nice tower. Okay, um, now I wanna add, let's see, like those white parts of my window. Oh, I can't do that while I'm in this thing. Of course, I have to wait. So I am gonna draw the, the oh, with my shape tool. And once again, I will make a clipping mask so it Never take pure white, but like always make it something 
like this. There we go. Now it's starting to look like a prison. Copy them. Uh, something like this. Oh. Don't want to work like this. Okay. Uh, but of course, this feels like very like a sticker put on there. So I'm gonna put my window in another folder. And there's some effects we can use. So if I put like, um, let's see, I think maybe inner shadow might work. And what this does is we'll create like in the on the folder, which is basically the whole window, it can create like this shadow. If you see if I change the angle of it, it will. Um, create the shadow to it and it's nice. I can make it very dark, I can make it lighter. Um, I can make it smaller or bigger. So th the shadow is nice, it can work, but uh, I think I'm also gonna add an inner glow to give it the feeling that it does like lay deeper than um, than it should be, and I'm not gonna. Okay, it's not on pure black, so that's good. So something like this, and like f from far, it's it's. If I put off this effect, it looks like a sticker, and now it looks like it's more like actually in my tower. Uh, although I think the colors are a bit too harsh, but that's okay because I can just say. Um, the white, for example, I am going to change that to more of a grayish color. Okay, maybe that's too much. Something like this. There you go. And if I save this, there you go. Now I have a tower in my... Um, scene and i'm gonna do the same for uh all my other towers i'm gonna make like i think another tower and then like a main building and then i'm gonna copy them around so if i now want to create another tower i'm gonna um new smart object via copy so if i click on this it will open another smart object but it still has my tower in it so that's a good base to start from like say i want to create like this kind of tower, I can just say, okay, I'm gonna uh, copy that window down. And you will see, like, if I save this and go to my main file, you see I have, an, uh, I have another tower. I, it doesn't influence this one because it's a new one. Uh, and I'm gonna like, remove the battlements and the top. And I'm gonna give this like a, a nice roof. Uh, but I'm gonna do this with a pen tool because I want to create this shape here. I feel like I need to make this a bit bigger to fit everything in. And with the pen tool, I will just draw my shape. And if I... Oh, no, that's not what I want to use. Uh, if I click Control, I can move this. Of course, it's still purple, but that's okay. I am gonna move this outside of my... Um, because I don't want the shadow to influence this. And let's give this like a nice... Let's say a bluish gray color. Yeah, that's nice. And again, I will make... Uh, like shadow on this with my purple um, but instead of like 
drawing like this, I'm gonna give it more of a... I'm gonna draw it with my brush. Or I can do this with my polygon lesser tool. I can just say, okay, take like one slice of pizza out of this. Uh, wait, first of all, I'll erase everything. Why this? Because I want to follow the shape it would have in, in, in real life. And then another layer. And this one actually, oh, it is like, okay, I will lower the opacity on this one. And then, okay, I have this. And if I hold shift, I can add to this selection, which will be this. And I will fill this all in. And also lower my opacity. There we go. And once again, I have this very angular shape, but I will combine these two, put them on multiply. And you see, like, since it's like more of a bluish background, it might not really work. So I am going to shift this more to a bluish uh, color instead of like the, the purple. Um, so light blue also works. It really depends on what your base color is, but like usually the light purple does a good job. And then filter, blur, Gaussian blur. There you go. And lower the opacity a bit. So now, in barely five minutes, I got a second tower, which I can use. And let's make another one. Let's make a, a main house, a main gate. And you see like all these layers, they're, they're not in my main file, so they keep it nice and clean there. Um, let's say that this main house... I'm just gonna change both of these. We're gonna make this a bit bigger. And I can copy my windows, like just... Like if, if you look at these castles, the windows are sometimes quite random. Uh, like there's one small, there's one big. If I like this window, if I say, okay, I want this one to be smaller or bigger, I'm just gonna make it smaller. Or maybe I even want it longer. There you go. And since these are just shapes, they won't like warp too weirdly or be too pixelated. Um, I am gonna like copy the shape up here. Oh. And just like change this a tiny bit to I don't I'm not gonna create a roof because I think that's a bit too much. I just want like something like this. And you can add in those tiny details, uh, but you don't have to. It all depends on the style you chose. I, I'm this one I'm just gonna leave flat. Um, because it will depend on how I place my towers where I will paint it. So this is my main house. Um, main house. There you go. Of course, that will be behind this. And basically, these are enough. Like maybe I can say uh, this one. Let's make one more copy. And let's say that from this one, we will remove the windows. Oh, that's the whole tower. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, and let's say that this is like a square tower. So we'll just leave it like that. Um, well, square tower with a round roof. I guess that's, that's maybe a bit weird. Well, uh, we can we can get away with it. So now I have like all these elements and I'm, I'm going to put them in a folder and call it castle. Oh, cancel castle 
there go. And what I can do with it is I can make a castle. So I want to say let's start from this main house and I have these three towers. I'm just gonna like put them I'm just gonna copy this folder maybe and so I have them all uh, as a backup. And okay, I want this tower to be here and this can be like this size. That's a nice size for that tower. And then this tower, for example, I'm gonna scale this down and I want a tiny tower attached to this one. And I'm gonna copy that again and like maybe I want another tiny tower here. And let's say we copy that again and I want one behind my building. And of course, I am gonna put, uh, I'm gonna use my sky layer again. And I'm gonna put this behind, like on the tower, because it will be lighter, because it's further away. Um, of course not that light, but like just a tiny bit. And this guy, we can like even scale it like this. And we can create like another outhouse, like a, maybe it's a gatehouse or something, something like this. Oh, I can use my arrow keys to move it, and maybe like here as well. Smaller. There we go. See, so yeah, now it looks like it is part of my castle. Uh, I'm gonna copy the tiny towers here as well. Oh. No, not here, that's uh... But like this you can basically create like a very... Simple, I can scale it however I want. Um... Maybe add another part here. I'm gonna make this way tinier. And maybe put this one. There we go. So this way I can create uh, a nice castle. I think I do need... Maybe... I'm just gonna scale this one up again and put this here. Yeah, this is starting to look as a sturdy castle. Uh, of course, I know, like now, the main house does look very flat. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is add another layer. Take a brush, my heart round brush. Uh, use my purple and just go like hold shift to draw a straight line oh, and just like this draw on my castle so use that um, oh. so it does look like there's some shadow here um like some occlusion shadow basically and uh multiply that course there you go and actually I want to do this on one okay. oh okay I want this here as well uh like maybe here a bit but it does look better if I can fit it in to the right um There you go. So now it does look like it has a... Like a nice... 
volume to it. Um, not liking this one. Come on. Deleted. There you go. Uh, I am gonna make this tower smaller. Just a bit. So it's not. Because now I created like this tangent here. And they're right on the same line. So I do wanna. Maybe. There you go. And let's say that we have another oh another tiny tower. Nah, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Where's my Ah there he is. I think that guy should also have like some shadow to it because it's really hidden behind the castle so I'm just gonna use my purple there you go so this is creating like really I can create hundreds of castles with these uh, of course you would spend more time on actually like building a nice silhouette and stuff uh, I am going to move this castle to my mid-ground folder um, because this is where my castle will be and it will be also hidden under some mist, some sky because it is further away than it should be. What I also want to add to this, I'm just going to take a, like my lasso tool, I'm going to take the normal one and I just want to like draw some bulky shape um, to then maybe cut some out. I want to create grass basically, so it blends nicer with the environment. Uh, let's say we take our bucket tool and we have our grass here and then I will add some like I have my selection here I'm gonna control I in oh, no, control shift E to inverse that selection uh, no wait I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna cut it out Cut it out. Um, Control Shift E to inverse my selection, but I also I so I wanna like um, give these another color, uh, but I wanna only draw on what I already have. So I'm gonna put on the lock, the transparency lock. Uh, I mean the alpha lock, which means that I on, only draw on what I already have pixel wise so I am gonna make it a bit lighter here uh, so to create this effect and if I like zoom out now there you go it is nicely I'm gonna put it in my castle layer so it's also influenced so you see now it is like nicely blended um, it doesn't look like it's just pasted on there it is Blend it in a bit. Oh, can't I? Darker color. It's probably not the right color. There you go. This one's a bit too much. So there we go. Having that nice uh, grass uh, to it. So if I would also uh, imagine, so I have my castle still here, I want to make another castle. Just keeping it here because it's e easier to work with. Uh, let's say I want another castle here. I'm just going to take this tower. 
Or you know, I want. I, I just want a watchtower with a with an outhouse or something. Maybe they have like yeah something like this. And then, uh, let's maybe move this and this. Um, so I have this, and I want to put this all the way in the back. Like it's it's a it's a watchtower in the back of the mountains. Um, Of course, everything that is further away will be smaller. Uh, yeah. No, I want this to be behind the mountains, basically. Oh, there. Oh, it's on the wrong way. Ah, there it is. So. This is going behind these mountains. There we go. So somewhere here. Uh, of course, this is. Um, can make it even smaller. So it's really far away, so it's smaller. But I'm also gonna make it lighter. First, I'm just gonna control E, which will make this into one layer. Then I'm gonna control U to get my U saturation out. Make it lighter, make it less saturated as well. Um, and I'm even gonna take my brush and just like, okay, maybe like I am gonna select it here, this color, and just oh, that's a bit too bright, okay, like paint away the um, window just so okay, wait let me remove the mist here so I can have the pure color there we go just paint away the window because it's a detail and you, you're not gonna see that from far and this way uh, I can oh create There you go. Like a tower in the background. It's gonna be smaller. I even think I actually you know what move it onto here or something. There you go. Uh, of course, what else I wanna do here? Um because I added my castle. I'm gonna make a copy of my castle. Control E it so I have it on one layer. Uh, of course, this is destructive. I can go back now. Uh, but uh, what I want to do is select all of it. Just take, uh, like, put the alpha lock on. Take my, I wouldn't say purple, but I might change it later. Just gonna color this purple. Control T to get my transform tools. And then I'm click distort and I want to like flatten it like this as to make a shadow out of it um oh it's being very jumpy I see like let's just say this is like a shadow um of course the shadow should be on a hill there we go uh, I want to say multiply, let's lower the opacity, but also I don't want it to have like this much, like this very harsh shadow. I'm just gonna go again to filter blur, Gaussian blur, and just like, oh yeah, wait, I have to turn off the alpha lock, otherwise it won't work. Um, Gaussian blur, there we go. That's a bit too much, but just like, it, it keeps the general shape, but it also blurs enough and like there we go so now i my hill is also casting a shadow uh my castle i'm sorry so i have my mist here as well um i can 
I'm gonna take one of the misty clouds and like... Oh, that's not the one I wanted. Let's say we take this one. I'm gonna copy it. And... Where's my castle? I'm gonna take it and like... Put a tiny bit here. Get some texture to it. All right. Now talking about texture, like these are probably a lot of techniques I've already shown, and of course this is something you will see in the whole semester. It's not something you'll see in one day, uh, but this is just like a basic, like how would this course work? Like, can I really draw when I don't? When I'm a programmer, I don't know how to hold a pencil. Yes, you can. Uh, you just need to use these make. Learn to make use of um, Photoshop. I'm also gonna add like a little bit of like, I'm gonna take a texture brush and Photoshop has a lot of them. Um, you will also get some brushes from us in, in different courses. But let's say I take like this soft oil pastel, all right. Or maybe I like this brush, this is... Yeah, let's just say we take this brush and I want to add some texture, but just like very slightly. Oh, I don't know, this brush is not working for me. What are these? Ah, okay, this is like a texture. Imagine like you want to give it a paper texture or something. There's like a lot of different techniques for that. But I just want to give my grass some texture. And I'm going to put this on soft light maybe. Lower the opacity and it will just have some... Like, a little bit of texture to it, not too much. Um, I can go over it with a darker color as well. There we go. And I also want to do this on my mid-ground here. Because uh, that's still close enough to see some of the grass texture. This won't work um, in the back. You don't want to do this in the back, of course. Um, I'm just gonna slightly give it some texture. Ooh, this is very, very bright. But... Soft just play with it and it's it's very subtle but it does make a difference and I mean we can keep going you can keep adding stuff and adding stuff until uh, we have something that looks good but this is already a very good start to like a very basic scene because that's also like you don't have to draw, you don't have to draw with your, like, I know I'm using my Wacom pen, but I'm not drawing stuff, I'm just making shapes and combining these shapes to create uh, real-life objects, like this castle, for example, it's basically just squares and triangles put on top of each other and added some effects in and just, like, abused the tools that are in here, because Photoshop has so many tools that you can use, uh, so many brushes that can be found anywhere, um, like, there's even cloud brushes if you want to use them, uh, but I do like this a bit more. Um, so, to end this uh, vault, DA vault uh, video, I just want to say, like, if drawing scares you and that would be the reason you don't want to come to DAE, I would say that's a stupid reason, because even as a programmer, you can draw. Uh, we can create stuff with simple shapes and that's hopefully um, that won't stop you from following your dreams and actually becoming a developer or something. So everyone can draw, just remember that you just need to know how to use the tool and how color works and stuff and that's what we want to teach you. So thank you for watching. I hope this was a bit informative. Uh, and hopefully we will see you guys next year or any of the other coming years. Bye!